If you're in your mid-40s or older and you've grown tired of relying on reading glasses to see up close, like to read your phone, or bifocals to see far, mid, and near, or if you're 65 or older and you've developed visually significant cataracts, you'll be asked to choose which type of lens implant to have placed in your eye to replace your natural lens. Which lens implant do you choose and how do you decide? The lens that you choose will affect how you see every waking moment for the rest of your life. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how we inform our patients of their lens implant options and how we help them make a decision on which lens to select to correct their vision given our experience as of October 2023. Who gets lens implants anyway? Well, there are two groups of patients who receive lens implants. There's a younger demographic, age 45 to 65, who simply want to reduce their reliance on glasses, bifocals, or reading glasses. The lens problem for this demographic involves presbyopia, which is the age-related process that everyone develops during this age range. When we use lens implants to correct vision in the 45 to 65 year old demographic, we refer to this procedure as premium lens replacement. The second group of patients that receive lens implants is a more veteran demographic. They're generally 65 years of age or older. For most people, at some time after the age of 65 and usually by age 75, our lenses inside of our eyes grow cloudy to a point that we can't see well enough through these cloudy lenses. This is called the development of visually significant cataracts. A common symptom of visually significant cataracts is difficulty seeing at night when driving due to glare from oncoming headlights. When we use lens implants to correct visually significant cataracts, we refer to this type of surgery as either basic cataract surgery or premium cataract surgery. Premium cataract surgery, premium lens replacement, and basic cataract surgery are all essentially the same procedure. The difference in the visual outcome for you is dependent on two important variables, the surgeon you choose and the type of lens implant that you select to correct your vision. To frame this discussion, Let's assume that you're between the age of 45 and 100. Your ophthalmologist or optometrist has recommended that cataract or premium lens replacement surgery is the next step to correct your vision and that you want to correct your vision surgically. Now we all use our eyes to see far, mid, and near. And the lens implant that we choose will affect how reliant we are on glasses to see that range of vision. Broadly, your first decision is to choose between a basic astigmatism correcting or premium lens implant. Basic lens implants help people see well, but require the use of glasses to see clearly at all distances, far, mid, and near. Basic lens implants are usually covered by your medical insurance and require the lowest out-of-pocket expense. Patients who choose to have a lens replacement or cataract surgery with a basic lens just want to see well and don't mind wearing glasses full-time to see their best. Basic lens implants have a narrow range of focus and do not correct astigmatism or presbyopia. Glasses are required to be worn to correct any astigmatism or to optimize visual clarity far, mid, and near. Astigmatism correcting lens implants help people see well without glasses far away. Patients choosing astigmatism correcting lens implants want to see well far away, for example, to drive or watch TV without glasses, and they don't mind wearing glasses to see mid-range and near. They just want to be able to see well far away. Astigmatism correcting lens implants 
are not covered by medical or vision insurance, and patients who want to achieve clear long-distance vision with an astigmatism-correcting lens will be charged additional fees that are paid out of pocket to achieve their visual goals. Premium lens implants help people see well at all distances, far, mid, and near, with minimal to no use of glasses. Patients choosing premium lenses don't want to have to rely on readers or cheaters, don't want to have to rely on bifocals or contact lenses. These patients want to see well without glasses, period. Premium lens implants are not covered by medical or vision insurance. Patients choosing a premium lens implant are sufficiently motivated to optimize their vision to reduce or eliminate their reliance on glasses that they're willing to pay out of pocket for the premium lens and the additional work and services that are needed to achieve their visual goals. Now, in 2023, we have five different premium lens implants that we use here in our practice. They're all excellent, but no lens implant is as good as the natural lens that we have in our 20s and 30s. There is no perfect lens implant. So if there's no perfect lens implant, then how and why do we use them? Because our natural lenses start clear and perfect in our childhood and gradually and inevitably lose optical clarity and flexibility as we age. By age 50, most people will need to make accommodations to see clearly at all distances by using reading glasses, bifocals, cheaters, or if you're already nearsighted and wear glasses to see far away, then an early sign of presbyopia is that you have to actually remove your glasses that you use to see far away to read up close and see clearly. So our natural lenses due to the aging process become less perfect and more imperfect than the man-made lens implants by our late 40s and beyond. So let's unpack the five premium lenses that we use in 2023 and which lenses we use most often and why. We'll discuss the strengths and weaknesses of each lens implant. The premium lens that we use most often for our patients who want to see far, mid, and near without glasses is the panoptics lens. It's a great lens that gives full range of focus. Patients with a panoptics lens typically can see clearly at all distances without glasses. They can read their cell phone with a normal font size and not the giant font size that some of us have to resort to to see up close without reading glasses. They can see their desktop computer, their dashboard, watch TV and see to drive without glasses. Patients with the panoptics may still need to wear reading glasses some of the time to see very tiny things up close such as threading a needle, sewing, or reading in dim light. Now every lens has a potential side effect and patients with the panoptics lens will see a halo around lights at night, such as oncoming car lights or traffic or street lights. They'll only see these halos during the nighttime, and these halos are generally not seen at all during daytime. The overall satisfaction rate with the panoptics lens in our practice is 99%. What about the 1%? Some patients will simply not like the quality of vision or the halo effect at night, associated with the panoptics lens. For these patients, we remove the panoptics lens and then replace it with a different lens that is more tolerable than their vision with the panoptics. What happens if a patient is having surgery to both eyes and has surgery to their first eye one day and the second eye one week later, likes their vision with the panoptics lens in their first eye, but does not want to see a halo effect around lights at night in their second eye. For these patients, an excellent option is to have the Vividi lens placed in their second eye. The Vividi lens delivers clear vision far and mid, but requires the use of glasses to see near. There's minimal halo effect around lights at night with the Vividi lens. There's less of a halo effect with lights at night with the Vividi lens than with the panoptics lens. So with the panoptics lens in one eye and a Vividi lens in the second eye, the combination of these two lenses 
generally works well since the strengths and weaknesses of these two lenses will complement one another when both eyes are open and used together. Our brains can integrate the two different lens optics to see well at all distances, day and night. Next scenario, you've not had surgery to either eye and you wanna correct your vision with a lens implant that's gonna give you full range of focus, far, mid and near, and you wanna minimize or have minimal to no nighttime halo. What lens do we select for those patients? This is the niche that the light adjustable lens fulfills. The light adjustable lens allows patients to see far, mid, and near with minimal halo effect at night. The light adjustable lens works well, but involves more visits to our office for follow-up than any other lens that we use. Normally with the other premium lenses, we see the patient day one, at month one, and if they're happy, they're pretty much finished and they don't need to see us unless they're having issues. So that's two follow-up visits after their eye surgery. Patients with the light adjustable lens will require between five and eight follow-up visits after having their light adjustable lens. If you choose the light adjustable lens, you'll see great far away immediately after surgery, but you will not be able to see up close and read your phone or read a document. You will need to use reading glasses to see up close for the first three to four weeks after your surgery. Additionally, during the first two months after receiving the light adjustable lens, you will be required to wear these special UV blocking glasses whenever you're outdoors to prevent excess sunlight from affecting the light adjustable lens. You do not need to wear these glasses if you're indoors, however. Starting three weeks after receiving the light adjustable lens, we use this light delivery device to adjust and customize the focus of the light adjustable lens to improve the reading vision in one or both eyes. So starting three weeks after receiving the light adjustable lens, in addition to seeing clearly far away without glasses, you start seeing better up close and at mid-range. We adjust the focus with the light delivery device, have you test drive your vision in the real world for one week, then if another treatment or two is needed to adjust how you see, we perform another LDD treatment to help you see your best at all distances, far, mid, and near. Once you like your vision, then we lock in the setting of the light adjustable lenses and your vision is then permanent and you can discontinue use of these UV blocking glasses 24 hours after the final lock-in treatment. Patients with the light adjustable lens will generally have one eye set to see far and mid, but not so well up close. They'll have their second eye set to see mid and near, but not as well far away. The target prescription or refraction for the long distance and mid-range eye is generally Plano or zero prescription. The target refraction or prescription for the non-dominant eye is typically minus 0.75 or minus one. This difference is slightly different than what is known as monovision. Monovision, one eye is set to zero, the other eye is set to minus one and a half to minus two. And the difference between the eyes is quite big. With the light adjustable lens, one eye is set to zero and the other eye is set to about minus 75 to minus one. The difference between the two eyes with the light adjustable lens is known as blended vision and is typically better tolerated than the vision that one would achieve with monovision. So for patients that want full range of focus and minimal night halo, the light adjustable lens works great. For patients that have had success with monovision with contact lenses, the blended vision with the light adjustable lens works even better than monovision for most patients. The next scenario that we see weekly are patients who had a procedure called radial keratotomy, also known as RK, in the 1980s or early 1990s 
and now they come in with either a visually significant cataract or they've grown bothered by their reliance on glasses and want to have premium lens replacement. What lens do we usually select for patients who've had prior radial keratotomy? The Symphony lens works best for these patients in our experience. We've had great success using the Symphony lens in these patients. The Symphony lens gives great vision far and mid without glasses for most patients. Patients with the Symphony lens will need to use reading glasses for close work some of the time and will see a halo around lights at night. But after using the Symphony lens on over 500 patients over the past six years, we have found that it works extremely well. Earlier in 2023, we started using the IC8 lens, which provides an extended depth of focus via a small aperture within the lens implant design. After using this lens for most of 2023, we have found that this lens is best suited to patients that have irregular corneas in conditions such as keratoconus, corneal scarring, or irregular corneas after prior corneal surgery. This chart is on our website and summarizes the lens implants that we have discussed. The out-of-pocket fees for each lens implant package are also listed. These fees cover the surgeon's fee, operating room, surgical center fee, anesthesia fees, and any additional refractive surgical procedures for one year after the original surgical date. I hope this video helps you understand your lens implant options as you are considering premium lens replacement or premium cataract surgery. Remember, all these lens implants are great and will help improve your vision every waking moment for the rest of your life. But no lens implant is perfect. If you choose to visit our surgeons and our practice to correct your vision, we will perform a comprehensive eye exam and obtain a complete set of diagnostic tests to determine which lens implant would be the best fit for you given your unique eye condition, circumstances, and visual expectation. We specialize in cataract and premium lens replacement surgery, and we would be honored to help you improve your vision. Thank you for your time and for watching this video, and hopefully we'll get to see and meet you if you choose to visit our practice. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.